Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, today I'm joined by Leanne Levitt, who is a personal trainer and also CEO of Business for Surgeons. She's going to be talking to us today about her diagnosis and treatment for giant cell tumour. If you'd like to start, please, Leanne. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, thanks, Joe, very much for having me. And yes, yeah, so we've got a, a lot <laughs> a lot to go through, big story, but I'm hoping that it's going to help someone else out there um, who has been diagnosed. So we'll go on to the so first slide. Okay. So do you want to tell us a bit about what you were doing before you were diagnosed, Leanne? Yeah, so before I had a very active lifestyle, I, from the age of 12, have always and have done being an international athlete. So I wanted to do that and was doing it and loved it. I was a personal trainer um, with, yeah, with being a long distance athlete, race for Great Britain in the world champs in Cancun in Mexico, did the Ironman marathon swimmer, so 10K swims. Lived in three countries, South Africa, UK, and now Switzerland. And I was double business award nominee. So very active and loving life and seeing clients. And yeah, I was South African born. So, so basically by the time I was diagnosed, I'd lived a very full life. I've done everything that I wanted to do and which was for me the main thing because that's what I would say to anyone who you don't know what's around the corner so if you've got something to do in life then do it no matter what anyone else thinks um because at the time people were like oh you're training too much you're doing this you that well you know I had to do what I had to do and I loved what I did and you know, there's a few pictures here with clients and races. I raced in different countries and totally love, loved it, loved every second. But as you say, you don't know what's around the corner. And I was so glad I did everything on my took-off list. Mm, so we've got, yeah, this next slide. So you're going to tell us a bit now about your diagnosis and your treatment. Yes, so I went out for my 40th, not knowing what was a week later going to happen. And yeah, so I diagnosed like a week later and it was awful and traumatic. And, <laughs> you know, you just, you just don't know what to say and your life flashes before your eyes and I didn't know whether I was going to lose my leg. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I had been, you know, getting leg pain, tiredness, couldn't walk far distances, but I thought maybe it's just for the move, stress, getting old. But, I, you know, compared to what my other sort of um, training partners were doing, <laughs> I wasn't that old. Mm. So, um, yeah, so I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with giant cell tumour, which is a one in a million rare disease which is like, you don't, I mean, you don't expect that. And from, that was like three o'clock in the afternoon and then referred to the main hospital, um, 7.30 the next morning. So I thought, well, this must be serious. And then I had all the other scans, like heart scan, brain scan, um, thyroid, uh, PET scan, x-rays, everything to see if there's any like cancer or anything the rest of the body um and yeah and at this point i still didn't know if i was gonna lose my leg or yeah very 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 scary so this picture over here is after the biopsy because i had to find find out of what it was i mean they call it sort of new but you know, biopsy is very good for finding things out. So um, an hour of drilling and 
oh, I was awake. So you're in like a mini theater and it was, yeah, very, I mean, yeah, you're just in a day. So you just like kind of got on with it. And then this is this picture over here is me being monitored by two doctors after. And then the going home after the biopsy. So not allowed to walk, shower and put on 24 hour bed rest. And then they still didn't know what it was. So I was just like, I was in so much pain. I was on so many painkillers. I just said, you know, I'll just go ahead with the surgery, which ended up being three weeks after the diagnosis. So it was a crazy, crazy time. And then had the surgery. I'll go on to the next, next slide over here. Okay. And I'm just going to ask you, when you were diagnosed, Leanne, had you heard of a giant cell tumour before or was it something that had never, you'd never come across before? No, 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 no. I hadn't even heard of it. I mean, bone cancer hadn't really been on my radar. Mm. It's, yeah. yeah, because it's so rare. Mm. And most people I spoke, speak to now haven't heard of it so I think it's really good what bone cancer research are doing mm. just spreading the word yeah so it must have come as a total shock to you then when you were diagnosed yeah exactly it was but I mean it was just a series of hospital appointments and then it was like a week stay in hospital so basically I had a just if you see over here that um, my leg was sort of cut into and then femur was scraped out and hot cement was poured into my femur. And then I had a partial bone graft over here, just at the distal end of the femur. So that was quite very painful. Yeah, and especially like this is two days um, post-op and then nine months. So yeah, so I mean, I was back in the pool quite quickly, three weeks, and then three and a half weeks back in the gym, and had to wait three months for the bone to bone graft to set. I was on crutches and a stick, and it was quite a big. I normally demonstrate by this ruler, so it was twelve centimeters, so quite big. But you know, I mean, yeah. So I had a lot of rehab to do. So lots of rehab, gym work, swimming. I mean, with what comes with it as well, the diagnosis is that afterwards you've, I mean, I was a personal trainer, so a very physical job, but also, you know, if you get like recurrence, then, you know, you'll need to have to have a backup. So I did lots of studying to retrain, upskill, get a career on track, plus provide for myself. Also comes with financial pressures. And so, yeah, it was just a constant round of two years of work and study and everything else. And then uh, with two years of post-op, no longer needed a stick or painkillers. So that's good. I hope that stays that way. And I've also taken a flight and a boat for the first time recently. So it is a long process because when the tumour is growing, it's also drawing out like iron and all your minerals and vitamins and sort of drawing your energy out. So that needs to be replaced when you're having mm. um, surgery, so through transfusions. And also it takes your body a while to get over, well, I suppose the shock and everything else, because your life's just turned upside down. So it does take a while. And I think that's why we're doing this, so that if people, you know, if people are watching this and going through the same thing and you're supporting someone, it's just not a few months, it's a, you know, to, it's a good two or three years to get someone back to some normal sort of life, yeah, mm. work and everything else. Absolutely. 
And what follow up uh, are you on at the moment, Leanne? How often do you have to go back for follow up appointments? Oh, um, yeah. So just with at the moment, <laughs> I've actually um, been. Yeah, we're going to the next slide. What I'm doing sort of now. Yeah. Um, I'm actually have just got signed off, um, as in got the all clear from the first big two years. And then I have to go back every six months, which is good because it was like three or four months and just checks in between. So I've got past the first, the first big hurdle. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, hopefully, I mean, you never know with these things so that you still got to be careful. But one step, <laughs> you know, one step at a time. And now I still got like another eight more years of checks, but the next big sort of hurdle to get over is the next three years, make it through the next three years clear. And then the risk goes down. So the first two years is when it's like life threatening and it's going to come back and it's, yeah, um, touch and go. Mm -hmm. I think once you, yeah, once you make it through the first two years, then that's a, that's a good sign. But I mean, just like to give people an idea that one year on, I mean, I had a lot of financial pressure. So I too, I was back working as a PT four months post top. And then this is a picture of me racing the 5K for Sarcoma Strong. And then uh, another photo shoot, which I did for my business. So there is life after that. There is a, a lot of work and rehab to get there, but I think it's worth it putting that in because I work with lots of my clients are um, people who've been through like knee surgeries or mm. um, have medical conditions and just getting themselves back on their feet as well as Ironman and triathletes. But yeah, so like just with present day, um, I've, it's the second year. So I had a tumor scare in, I think, yeah, in the, so the first year I got through okay. And then the second year, so there's 12 to 24 or 26 months, there was something which I weren't sure, but um, it turned out okay, which was good. <laughs> It was quite stressful going through all those scans. And then I completed my second year of my business management leadership practice qualification, and then also my education qualification to lecture um, personal trainers and teach personal trainers online. And I was also have, or I am in the process of launching Business for Surgeons on the 1st of October. So for me, yeah, I've kind of taken all that and turned it into a positive. And I've got so many new friends like the Bone Cancer Research Trust um, support group and Joe's become a good friend. And we've, yeah, it's been, it's been really good. So good stuff has come out of it. <laughs> I mean, you don't really want to go through all that. So you kind of have to take the positives. And um, yeah, I'll just say, you know, thanks so much for listening to my story. If anyone wants to email me and if they did want to get in touch or look at my Instagram. And thanks so much to Bone Cancer Research Trust for the ongoing support and to Joe for her friendship and presenting with me. So I know it's not an easy topic. But um, hopefully now I stay like tumor free <laughs> and it's onwards and upwards with our business and just get back to like a normal life. Oh, thank you so much, Leanne. That was fantastic. And I'm sure that I'll really help people who or family and friends of people who are actually going through a giant cell uh, tumor diagnosis at the moment. Um, so thank you very much on behalf of the Bone Cancer Research Trust. And thanks for having me.